welcome to the final lesson in bolt action basic training. Today we're going to infantry artillery school. This is a huge topic in bolt action. Okay, in bolt action we're dealing with uh, we up to now have dealt really with just the single impact weapons, the, the solid shot, if you will. We haven't gone into the high explosives. Now, there's a lot of different ways high explosives come into the big game. That's why we're saving it to one battle report, to, and one sorry, one lesson, so you can really see how it plays. And again, by seeing it continually used, seeing the different ways that uh, things happen in the field of artillery and in H high explosives, you'll get a better understanding of how the mechanic works, and you should pick it up like that. All right, so let's kind of cover up cover this really quick. What you're going to need when you introduce any artillery or high explosive rounds, which could be mortars, or any artillery piece, or even anti-tank guns, okay? Because anti-tank guns have a high explosive option. Not very powerful, but it's there. Just want to let you know about it. Uh, auto cannons will also have a special variation on that. Now we'll talk about auto cannons a little separately. So, what you'll need that you don't already have is essentially a set of templates. Real simple. Just all you need are rings that are 1 inch, 2 inch, 3 inch, and 4 inches in diameter. That's all you need. You can get those rings anywhere. You can make them. You can print them out if you get a 3D printer. have a friend who has it. You can do it. Bolt Action, uh, sorry, Warlord Games produces their own. It's a, a nice, basically a, a, almost a figure eight that has all four, you know, the, the two rings basically with the internal diameter is, is one and three inches. The external diameter of two rings is two and four inches. Very easy to use. When we get to the classroom, I'll actually show you what those look like. But that's the only other thing you'll need when it comes to this in the, uh, you know, the whole use of, of high explosive artillery. Okay. All right, so that's really all we're going to be covering here. It's a, there's a lot to it, but it's a very focused uh, subject matter. So let's head down to the classroom, and we'll see what we can learn about high explosives and artillery. All right, so what is HE, high explosive? Um, what you've seen in the uh, games and the lessons prior to this is we've considered solid shot uh, from every gun that's fired. High explosive is instead a, a shell that has an explosive component inside designed to create shrapnel, right? So it's an area effect weapon. Now, okay, now H weapons use a template uh, to resolve the hits instead of just one uh, strike, one hit. And you can use like this Warlord Games template here. Uh, you know, it's essentially it's a nifty little template. I, I, I actually do like it. Uh, <clears throat> you have all the templates you need right here in the one, or you can use, you know, individual rings. So, it's really easy to, to kind of figure this out. Weapons systems, many of them can use you know, your regular mortars, uh, howitzers, but even your anti-tank guns and, and guns for on vehicles can fire high explosive ammunition as well. The profile of the, the vehicle, <coughs> Sorry, the profile of the weapon the vehicle has will actually mention an HE. And <clears throat> take a look at the, like this example um, over here of the couple of different weapon profiles. You'll see an HE and a uh, diameter uh, listed. That tells you what kind of HE is. Now if you take a look at this table, this is the table of the four different type of high explosive uh, uh, charges. Okay, It's really easy to remember. <clears throat> you have four different sizes. Everything from a one inch, two inch, three inch to a four inch template, and that's that's what you're limited to. Now, what's different about high explosive is that it will not inflict only one pin when it's hit, like normal weapons do. Instead, it will inflict inflict a random number, and you'll see based on the number of uh, the, the size. You'll be everything from a D2 up to a D6 pins. So they can actually put down a lot of pins on a unit. So you got to be careful of these HE rounds. The other thing that's important is take a look at the pen value. Very easy to remember pen values for these. Now pen value is equal to the diameter of the template. So your one inch is plus one pen. Light howitzers, uh, two inch template, plus two pen. Very easy to remember. So <clears throat> the one thing to remember about the pen value though 
is that it is never affected by long range. Since you're exploding the shell on the target, you're taking whatever the pen value is right there. So no, no penalties for range. So that, in a nutshell, is kind of what we're dealing with here in the, the HE space. Uh, different weapons had different ways of delivering an HE round to the target. One way of doing this is firing direct fire, which is what we've been doing um, all up to this point, right? Which you fire, your normal modifiers apply, you know, long range uh, or super short range. Is it behind cover or in cover? Like all those bonuses. It, it just works out like we've been doing prior to this. The other way is indirect fire. So we'll talk about that one differently. Now, indirect fire is different from direct fire in this one way. You can actually fire over your own units or through. You don't have to worry about the one inch gap between your line of fire and a, one of your own friendly models. So <clears throat> that can be very useful to set your uh, indirect fire units behind your lines and it'll just lob shells over to your opponent. Okay. Indirect fire also has a minimum range whereas direct fire does not. Now you have to pay a very close attention to your weapon profile in the chart because some indirect fire uh, weapons that can also shoot direct fire have completely different maximum ranges depending on which way you're shooting. So pay close attention when you're uh, using your weapon profile. All right, now regardless of how you're shooting your, your HE round, the target can react normally. So when you, you select the target unit to fire on, that unit, if it doesn't already have an order dice, can choose to go down in response to your attack. Going down will obviously make it harder to hit on a direct fire weapon. It won't affect an indirect fire roll, but one advantage of going down with high explosives is that you actually have the number of hits. So we're going to talk about a number of hits and how you determine that in just a second. Okay, so before we go into the details of you know, how do you hit and some of the specific rules, there's one very unusual uh, HE type of round, and that's the one fired by autocannons, such as is on this Crusader tank here. Essentially, it's a, situ it's a weapon that has multiple uh, shots, and as a result, you can have more than one successful hit with an HE round. The template for that is actually going to be a little different. Uh, you can make your own, and I'll show you one an example, but essentially you're going to be using just the one inch template, and you're going to be using multiples of those, one for each hit, and you'll be per organizing them in a certain way to determine the number of hits. <clears throat> so let's kind of move into a different section, and let's take a look at how we actually determine if we what how many models we've got. Alright, so let's talk about the template itself. You could, as I said before, you use a regular warlord template, which is kind of neat. Or you can actually have separate uh, rings. Now the key is the simplest way to do it is to have a ring that's a half inch wide. So the inside diameter is one inch, outside there's two inch, or three inch and four inch. Or you can have you know four different rings where the diameter is exactly three inch, four inch, two inch, or one inch, right? Now, <clears throat> for an autocannon uh, type HG explosion, you're going to need something a little bit different. You're going to need a one inch, but I chose to make a couple of these templates where the, two, the one inch is joined together. And I braced it with this little one by, or you know, short uh, piece of plastic sprue or, or styrene. Because when you have an autocannon hit, <clears throat> you get, each autocannon hit gives you a one inch template to throw down. If you have, however, if you have more than one, you have to stack them. So, you put down one for a single, you put down two for two uh, hits, but they have to be touching. <clears throat> if you have three hits, then you would place the third one in touching any of the, the uh, two you already placed down. And if you have four, again, same way, you just, you can arrange them. And you're going to arrange these in such a way as you get the most hits on the target. And we'll show you how to do that in just, just a moment here. Alright, so here's our unlucky uh, British forces that are being targeted by an HE round. Now we're going to go ahead and start with uh, the simplest. We're going to hitting a vehicle. Okay. <clears throat> Whenever you're hitting a vehicle, you have to center it, the HE explosion, over the center of the vehicle. You can't, you know, shift it the center point, it has to be centered on the vehicle. So that means the smaller HE rounds will not damage anything beyond the vehicle. But if you get a large enough one, now this model is one inch, just over one inch away, 
okay? But when you center a 4-inch template on that model, it's going to clip that other unit. So it is possible to catch another unit when you're hitting a, a vehicle, but it has to be a pretty large uh, blast. Now, if I were to instead use, let's just say, I'm going to use this tank here, okay, still an inch away. <clears throat> I have to center it over this tank, so that means it's going to be way back here, okay, and so I'm not going to be directly over that model. So the smaller vehicles, the smaller the vehicle, the more likely it is you're going to be able to catch something else really, really close to it. All right, so that's how you would determine hits on a vehicle. Now, hitting a vehicle with an HE explosion is always going to be, uh, you're always going to select the armor uh, facing from which the, direct sh the shot is coming from if it's direct fire. If it's indirect fire, you're always going to consider it being a top armor. We'll talk about that in a little bit more in detail in a couple seconds. All right, well, let's take a look at a, <clears throat> on a unit. How do you do it with a unit? So let's use the three inch, let's pretend we got a three inch, uh, so that'd be inside the circle here, a three inch blast. <clears throat> We're going to have to place it down on the models here such that the center of the template is on or between the models, okay? Meaning I have to be, I can't leave it like out here, okay? It has to be the center of it has to be over a model or between two models of the unit. And what I'm trying to do is find the position where I can maximize the number of models I'm hitting. So here's five. There's six. Here's six. So the most I can get is six in this one. Okay? And that you, you place it so that you maximize. That's the, the rules. You don't try to you know, find the best spot that gets you the most, like for maybe splash damage to another unit nearby, which I'll talk about in a second. You have to maximize the number of hits on the unit. <clears throat> Let's, what if this three inch was hitting this unit here? Okay, it's small enough, I'm getting all three. I have to center it on a model or between, so that's right here. And of course, if, if I don't have, if I don't read the rules right, I'm gonna think I can splash the, the uh, carrier here. But remember, I have to maximize the number of hits on the initial targeted unit. So that means I have to bring it over to here to make sure I get all three, which means I'm not splashing the tank. So it's extremely important you maximize. <clears throat> now obviously if you get a huge, uh, you know, the four inch template on a small unit, then yeah, <laughs> even, even getting <laughs> all three, I still pick up the damage on the carrier. So, <clears throat> so just remember, Place the center of the template on or between two of the models in the uh, squad. All right, and that's the number of hits that you actually succeed in delivering to the target. Now, obviously, it's only gonna be, ever going to be one hit on a vehicle. But now, you roll to wound just like normal. And remember, it's very simple to remember the pen value for it. A pen value is equal to the inch, the diameter of the... Uh, actual template, so center one is plus one pen, two plus two pen. We were assuming a three inch uh, how, uh, template, like a medium howitzer, so that means we're going to be plus three pen to wound six models in this unit. So roll those dice normally, and the number of wounds are treated the same. You can go ahead and the opponent selects whichever units he, models he wants to kill, Unless, of course, you roll a six, and then followed by another six, you get roll for exceptional damage. You're able to do that. It's very, very, very useful uh, taking out uh, units because of that essentially huge plus to your pen value, right? Now, before you move on to the next thing, you got to figure out how many pins. So instead of just delivering one pin, you can say, take a look. I'll put the chart up here in this corner. On a one-inch template, like a light mortar, you're going to do D2 pins. So 50 50, one or two pins is pretty good. On a two inch or three inch template, you're going to do D3 pins. And on a four inch template, you're going to do D6 pins. They can put a lot of pins down on an enemy unit, especially if it's like a tank and the opponent, you can actually damage, potentially damage the tank. So this is a good way to start eating away at a, the pins on a unit 
putting them on there so that eventually they hopefully break and flee the table instead of just trying to destroy them all the time. All right, so what about this one inch auto cannon template kind of thing? So it's gonna be a little tricky since I don't have multiple hands. <laughs> I don't have a, something to hold this camera in position. But what I'm gonna need to do is all of these models are within one inch of another model in the unit. So they're all spaced out properly. <clears throat> so I'm going to take my first auto cannon hit and I'm going to place it somewhere. I'll place it right here. So I just clip the first one and most of the second. Okay. Now if I was able to get two hits, then I'd <clears throat> instead use like this and try to get it. So here I'm able to pick up two units. See, there are two mo both these two models on one and these two models on the other. All right, now remember, this is one template now. Even though there's multiple shots or multiple uh, hits of the uh, autocannon, I'm only using one template. So I'm going to count three models. You don't double count the one that's hit by both, right? Both circles. So that's three. Now if I were to get a fourth, or let's just say, here, I'll do this. <clears throat> if I have a, a third one, I'm going to try to do this. And I'm going to place it such that here it's over four models now. So I'm able to get the three autocannon hits, three templates lined up so I pick up all four of those guys. And if I'm lucky enough to have actually four, then I could probably get a fifth one if I am very, very careful. If I can pull this off. Okay, so like here. Now I've got these same four under there, but now I've just brought this one into, into uh, the hit. So I've, with four autocannon shots that hit, I was able to get five units. So that's how you determine the number of units or models hit by your HE autocannon rounds. Now, autocannon, this is where you're sacrificing a little bit. You have a chance of getting additional hits instead of, it's like for example, a single shot from an autocannon will get you uh, one hit, but if you use a template, you can get two. If the guy's tightly packed, you can get three or four, okay? So sometimes you want to go to HE, but when you go to HE with an autocannon, your pen drops from two or three down to one. And so it's great against uh, infantry and soft targets, not so great against obviously armored targets, but getting an additional number of hits on infantry is really what you're going for here. So that's why you would use autocannon uh, HE shots instead of just a solid shots. All right, so let's talk about indirect fire. I'm going to use this howitzer as an example real quick of how we do indirect fire. It's going to fire, uh, it, it can fire directly out to, out to 48 inches, or it can fire indirectly, I think, out to 60 inches. But it had, you notice up in the table here, up in the upper um, left-hand corner, here's the stats for this. And you can see how it has a minimum range and a maximum range if you use the HE round and go indirect fire. Now, in order to determine if I can shoot something directly, I need to draw a line of sight from the breach to the target. Indirectly, though, I need to draw a line of sight from one of my crew members to the target unit. Now, we'll talk about spotters in a separate video, okay? But for now, no spotters. <clears throat> so, as long as one of the models in the unit can see, that artillery unit can actually fire indirectly. Now, to fire indirectly, you roll a single D6, and you need a 6 to hit. No modifiers at all. Just, are you hitting a 6 or not? You roll a 6, you hit, and you apply the... Uh, figure out how many hits you've done just like we talked about just a second ago. If you miss, well, you start ranging in. So put a little marker by the target unit and the firing unit and put mark it as a 5 because now next time it shoots, it'll need a 5 or less. And if it misses, the following time will be 4 or less. And each turn that you miss and then try to hit again, it's going to reduce the number needed to hit by 1 until a minimum of two is reached, okay? All right, so now let's, if you do happen to hit, from that point on you're considered to have ranged in and you now only need a two to hit from that point forward 
uh, in the future turns. Now the only way for the opponent to avoid this is to actually have his unit wiped out or to move far enough. So here's an example. I've got a unit of seven guys here marked out by this four inch ring. And what I need to do is be able to move the unit so that it, the footprint of the unit moves at least two inches away from where it was. Now it doesn't mean I just have to move the unit two inches. It has to move completely two inches away from where it started so that if this model moves this way, this model has to be two inches away from that point. So, <clears throat> if you have a blob of unit infantry like this, it's going to be very hard for you to move the six inches and get outside of two inches from your initial footprint. You may need to run them to get them out of the way. So you may want to actually keep your guys kind of more in a line. This way, it's easier to move. So they're only about two and a half inches this way. <clears throat> I can easily move six inches and get this back row more than two inches away from where the front row stopped. Okay. Let me show you, put this illustration up, and this should actually make it a little bit easier. So you'll notice the unit began here and needs to move. It's we're just going to use an advanced move of six inches, and it needs to end up over here so that the distance between the area it started in and the area it ended in is more than two inches. It's called the footprint. Large vehicles <clears throat> that don't have a lot of room to move, or large infantry units in certain configurations may find it hard to escape that. Because until you do, the, the ranged in still counts for it. As soon as the target unit moves more than two inches, you take the, the ranging in away, and the firing unit has to begin again with a six to hit. Okay, so let's talk about one more thing uh, dealing with high explosives. And that is the difference between hitting direct fire on a vehicle and hitting indirect on a vehicle. Hitting direct is you follow all the rules we've talked about before. But hitting indirectly, it is assumed to hit the top. Okay? So, <clears throat> on a armored vehicle, any unit or any HE round coming in from the top, like indirect fire, is going to be treating the uh, he's going to get a plus one to pen because it's the weaker top armor, right? Now, if it's direct fire, it's always going to be against the facing. Indirect fire is always against the top. That's how it works. Now, open top, that's interesting. Now, direct fire, there's no penalties to this uh, except the fact that it's going to take pins uh, just for being hit. <clears throat> However, if it's hit by an indirect fire HE explosion, not only is it treated as being hit in the top armor, you actually get plus one to the roll on the penetr on the damage table. Show we're basically reflecting how vulnerable it is to have an HE round explode inside the crew compartment. So essentially on a three or better from an indirect fire, an open top vehicle is destroyed. Even if it's a like an M10 with a you know, heavy armor and uh, you know, big anti-tank gun. It's still going to get destroyed because e more easily because it came in from above. So that's the difference between HE rounds coming in direct fire and indirect fire. All right. So the last topic we want to cover today has to do with you know the effect of buildings really on uh, with with high explosive ammunition, right? Now, the one thing that I'm going to talk about right now before we get into the actual buildings is the effect of a unit that is down when it's hit by artillery. Now, you remember that when the unit is targeted, it can choose to go down, for which in the case of direct fire can actually make it harder to hit by two, or in the case of indirect fire, won't change the chances of hitting, but it will reduce the damage. So here's how it works. If, you're, if the target that's hit by an uh, an HE um, weapon is is down when it is hit. You put the template over it like normal to determine how many uh, soldiers get hit. And but before you apply it, you divide by uh, in two, divide cut it in half. You're always rounding up though, so you're going to get a minimum of one hit no matter what. 
So going down can be very important to keep your units survivable, even against HE ammunition. All right. Now, <clears throat> that will hold true in buildings as well. But buildings actually change a couple other key rules about how do you use high explosives, whether it's indirect fire or direct fire. So let's kind of cover that now. All right, we're going to start by talking about direct fire because it's very similar to what we're used to. A building has, you know, it's hardcover. So you normally, when you think about direct fire, you normally think about subtracting the uh, two for hardcover, you know, make it hard to hit. But in the case of HE direct fire, you don't do that. All right, so when you decide to shoot at a unit that's in a building, you only, you're, there, you're not going to be taking into any account the cover penalty or cover bonuses that the unit has inside. So hard cover, soft cover, you don't apply it. Small team still applies. The pin markers you've got still apply. Long range still applies. Any other special rules that may make it harder for you to hit will apply. Super short, <laughs> that still, that'll apply as well. Now the key is though, you're aiming at the building's floor, not the actual unit inside. <clears throat> so, the one thing that's going to happen is you can decide when you're being shot at, the player can determine, can declare that he wants to go down. Down will also subtract two from uh, your roll when you roll a hit. Because the, the concept there is that the unit's trying to kind of uh, find some shelters out of the way, get some protection from overhead, you know, under whether it's under desks or buildings or you know, any parts of the interior, they're going to try to find some protection. So, <clears throat> roll the hit. If you hit, then damage is determined differently. You don't actually put the template over the building. You roll random a number, a certain number of dice. Now, if you take a look at the table, which I'll go ahead and I'll put it up. Yeah, I'll throw it over here. Okay. You'll see that a, a one-inch template is a D3 number of hits. Not too bad. Uh, but notice it's two, three, and four inch are one, two, and three D6 hits. Now, even if it's a small team, you know, with only two guys, it's going to take all those hits. So you can actually do more hits than you have models in the unit. So that's why early in the very first video <clears throat> about small arms, I mentioned why, how buildings are very, very good protection against small arms, but you have to be careful if there's heavy weapons on the table, like artillery, because that's when buildings become dangerous. So, <clears throat> when you have a unit that goes down, you're going to have the unit, the amount of damage, just like I discussed earlier. Now, <clears throat> the timing of this all is very, very important. If you read the rules carefully, you'll notice that you have a choice to go down before the target, the fire shoots, but also with direct fire against uh, using HE, if you don't declare to go down when you're being shot at, after the hits occurred, but before you roll for damage, the player, as, again, as long as there's no order that's already on them, can choose to go down. So this is one situation where you've got basically two points at which to make the decision to go down. So I think that's actually... I don't know if they meant to do it that way, but that's how it's written. So be careful how you play it. Don't forget that that's how you uh, determine when to go down. Okay. Now, <clears throat> what's interesting, though, is when you actually roll for damage, and you go do your rolls, you add the uh, pen value of the HE blast, 1, 2, 3, or 4, depending on the size, but you do not get any bonuses or pen, uh, benefits of extra protection from the building like you normally would. Just like with the... Um, a gun shield. As a matter of fact, that's something else when you're looking at shooting at a artillery piece. If it has a gun shield, HE does not, ignores any gun shield or special um, protection offered by gun shields or buildings. So you're going to be hurting even veteran troops pretty well, you know, very often, even with a light howitzer, which is a two-inch template. That's plus two. So you're killing veteran guys, soldiers, on a three plus. So, like I said, dangerous to be in a building when there's HE around, okay? Now, the next thing you have to think about or figure out is when a building's hit, if it's a, if it's a heavy, sorry, a large, a 3-inch or 4-inch template, you have a chance of rolling 2d6 or 3d6. In that case, you actually have a chance of bringing the whole building down. So, what you'll do is when you roll number of damage, the amount of number of wounds, if you roll a 10 or higher before having it for, uh, for example, the unit being down, 10 or more hits or wounds means the whole building has just collapsed. 
So if you actually did roll 10 or higher, the building comes down, there's no wound, don't need to roll the wound. Every model, every infantry model or artillery model in the building is destroyed. There's no disembarking like you would a vehicle. They're simply dead. Okay, no chance of, that's not a good way to kill veterans with a heavy howitzer, medium howitzer even, on a building. Now, the one last thing I want to point out, this applies whether it's direct fire or indirect fire. When you shoot at a unit outside of the building with a temple large enough that after you're placing it on the unit, it overlaps the building, you discount any of that effect on the building. A template that is shot at outside the building cannot hurt the building or anyone in the building itself. <clears throat> Just assume that the, the, the building's walls absorb the, the shrapnel. Okay, so again, unless you're hitting it directly on the house or the building itself, you can't hurt the units inside. All right, let's talk about firing indirect HE rounds at buildings, okay, the units in buildings. What you're going to do is you're going to target the building as opposed to the unit inside. And the key here is that you roll normally, you know, to range in. Hopefully, you'll finally get a hit. And if you do get a hit, now you roll an additional die. Because on a four, five, or six, the round explodes on the topmost floor. So in this building, for example, you're, it's going to explode in the third floor. If there are no units on that, no one's hurt. If there's a unit there, they take the damage, right? Uh, now, the reason this is important is, I'll throw this out here for example. It's, if you have a building like this with a flat roof where you can actually put men on top, that would be the top floor of the unit. So again, you roll to see if on a four, five, or six, it explodes on that top floor, whether there are units there or not. Now, <clears throat> because you've hit, or I just want to make, make sure you remember this, because you've hit, you've ranged in, so now you're two plus to hit from that point on, right? The only can't move, so there's no way to lose that, unless, of course, you move your, your indirect firing weapon. But now, if you roll to one, two, or three instead, it actually passes through the uppermost floor into the next floor. So roll D6 again. On a 4, 5, or 6, it explodes on that floor and affects any units on that floor. A 1, 2, or 3, it penetrates through the next floor. So again, 4, 5, 6. So you're going to work your way down until you reach the very bottom, and that's where it will explode. It will explode somewhere in the building. Now, <clears throat> you may want to talk with your uh, opponent and determine whether or not any of the buildings have a cellar. There are you know, situations where maybe with an, a narrative scenario or something, a, there, a cellars might be important. It might be a way, there might be something hidden there. Or it's a place for uh, some units to kind of hide out and wait until the right moment of the game to come out. Anyway, a cellar would be another occupied floor, right? So it would, the round would come through and potentially reach the cellar. Now, with one shot, only one unit in that structure can be hurt. It depends on which floor it actually lands on. Again, as with direct fire, any uh, three inch or four inch template, which has a 2d6 or 3d6 number of kill uh, hits on infantry in a building, if you roll a 10, again, prior to having 10 or more, the whole building comes down. So, again, like I say, dangerous for infantry to be in these buildings with larger HE units around. Okay. Okay. All right, now I'm going to mention one thing uh, that I'll clarify, actually. When, even if the round explodes in a floor of the building that has no in infantry on it, no unit on it, you still have to roll to de determine the number of hits. If it's a, a large a three inch or four inch template because again even though you may have missed the unit you wanted to hit the round exploded in the building and you could still roll ten hits or more and if you have well that means then that the building has come down even though it exploded on a floor that you didn't in, that didn't have the infantry okay so sometimes a near miss is good enough <laughs> okay all right there you have it that's the infantry killer I can guarantee you, it's it's an anything killer. High explosives can be devastating, especially when your infantry units are packed tightly, or you're coming in directly with even a, mortar, a medium mortar on top of a tank. It's enough to put the fear into that tank and really disrupt them.
So always consider using your high explosive rounds, your artillery, against your opponent. Try to put more of, the, more of that in your list. It is a potent weapon, sometimes harder for the opponent to deal with, So, and especially since you can actually honestly fit several of them in, in your, your platoon. You can have, for example, one mortar, excuse me, one mortar, you can have one artillery piece, you can have an armored car, and those ha some of those have auto cannons, and auto cannons have an HE round. And then you can have tanks or self propelled guns, especially uh, something like the priest or the sexton, which is a howitzer on a tank, right? Those are going to put down, there's three, potentially four slots in your reinforced platoon that can bring down HE fire, not counting your forward observer, which can be deadly. So, feel free to kind of play around. Please go back to the rule book, review it, but stay tuned because the next video is going to be a field exercise where we see just how deadly high explosives can be. All right? Bring on the artillery. So, thanks for sticking with me in this video and this, these, these four lessons. Please share, like, subscribe, especially if you've got friends who want to learn, learn about the game or are interested in learning bolt action. Send it to them or send them our way, and then we'll teach them how to play. All right? Have a lot of fun, and stay tuned for the field exercise. Bye-bye.